Okay, folks, we've made it through the first week, and now we can move into some introductory topics to help us build a foundation for our futures as data analysts. What to expect from this week? We will go over some very basic concepts of data management, some terminology and methods for describing the data, types of data we may encounter, and some simple ways to summarize the data that we have. The first section we will tackle is about how to manage your data effectively so that analyses can be conducted as questions arise. Data management is relevant to every aspect of public health as both support and justification for programming, evaluation of efforts, and assessment of population health status. There are no substitute for adequate data that allows public health professionals to understand the community in which they work. But how do we make sense of it all? We hear from community members about their needs, business owners about what they're doing to support employee health, hospital staff about the prevalence of infectious diseases, and on and on and on. In order to know where to target funds, we must be able to sift through everything we are presented with in our work as public health professionals. To start with a basic understanding of how to organize data and some vocabulary associated with it, we're going to take a look at the standard approach, which includes taking information from individuals or regions, such as counties or states, et cetera, and, in or and organizing it in such a way so that we can associate all the data points relevant to each record's set of characteristics to develop a summary or analytical statistics. Let's start with some vocabulary. A variable is some element or characteristic that can exist in different levels or amounts. Some example of variable, variables we encounter in public health are age, race, gender, income, employment, disease state, smoking status, and, and many others. A record is a term used to represent a unit of analysis such as individuals, cities, counties, states, etc. These units of analysis will have characteristics or variables associated with them that are of interest to our work. A data point is a single unit of information associated with a specific record and variable. An example of a data point is an individual's age. Johnny is 25. That is a single data point for Johnny. Now looking back at our data table, we see our records along the left-hand column and our variables along the top row. This allows for simple cross-referencing. We can find data points we need with ease by finding the record of interest and moving along that record's row and stopping at the variable of interest. For example, data point 1A. This is the value for record one and variable two. This arrangement allows not only for quick reference, but for summary and analysis of the data set overall, which we will discuss in later slides. We also have to consider the types of data we have available. There are several types that each require specific approaches for summarizing. The two overarching categories of data are categorical and qualita or qualitative and numerical or quantitative. Within the categorical class of data, we have a handful of subtypes, ordinal, nominal, and binomial. The numerical data class includes discrete, which includes whole numbers or integers, and continuous, which can include any value along a range. There are additional more specific types of data within the class is presented here, but for our purposes, we need only to concentrate on these. Let's first focus in on the categorical data, which is all about quality. This means that the data represent a specific quality characteristic that can neither be added or subtracted. A great example presented here is gender, which is what's referred to as a nominal variable. Consider this. What numerical value can be added or subtracted to either a female data point or a male data point to equal another gender? None that are meaningful. Another example is color. Blue minus red does not equal yellow. You might say blue plus yellow equal green, but this is not true in a mathematical sense, only in the sense that if you mix the two colors, you arrive at a qualitatively different color altogether. On the other side of the data tree are numerical data, which are all about value added or subtracted. Take the example here of Sultan Kosen, the tallest man in the world, and Junri Balawing, the shortest man alive. While they each have many qualitative characteristics, one very distinct numerical difference between them is their height, which happens to be a continuous variable. 
This is demonstrated by converting their feet to inches and subtracting them to arrive at a value of 72.6 inches. Meaning, if we want to reach the height of Sultan, beginning at the height of Junri, we simply add 72 inches. The values within a numerical data set have what is referred to as meaningful space between them. That is the space that can be measured. Let's talk now about the specific differences between discrete and continuous data. To review, discrete data can only consist of whole number integers, while continuous data can include any number along a range of values, meaning the data can be ever more subdivided into infinitely smaller segments. Let me demonstrate. Consider the distance from the west coast of the United States to the east coast. An inexact estimate of this distance is about 2,800 miles, or 14,780,000 feet, or 177,408,000 inches, or 4,506,163,200,000 micrometers. We could keep slicing the distance between coasts into ever smaller segments on and on and on. These are continuous data. Now, considering the footsteps it would take to get from California to North Carolina, we would be counting discrete steps, one, two, three, four, and so on. The number of steps cannot be meaningfully subdivided as we did with measures of distance. These data are discrete. Now for some vocabulary. Qualitative data are information about qualities, that which cannot be measured. Within the qualitative data class, we have ordinal data, which consists of a ranked set of values that do not have numerical significance beyond establishing an order within a set of values. An example of this is levels of schooling. The fourth grade will always come before the 12th grade, but these numbers only represent the order by which students progress through the school system. They are not meaningfully added or subtracted from each other to gain further understanding of the distance between fourth and 12th grade. Nominal data, which we've discussed in detail, are those data that consist of individual items that do not have an implicit or natural value or rank, such as colors, race, gender, emotions, and some other examples I'm sure you can think of. Binomial data, which we have not yet discussed, are those data with only two levels. These can actually be considered a subclass of either the nominal or ordinal data. Again, gender is a good, as good an example as any of binomial data. Another term for binomial is dichotomous. Quantitative data are those that express a certain quantity, amount, or range. Within this class of data, we have discussed continuous data, those that can be divided and reduced to finer and finer measures, and discrete data, which cannot be made more precise and is represented only in whole numbers. Examples within each class of data discussed in this module that you have or will encounter working in public health are the number of children living in homes, which is a quantitative discrete measure, time spent washing hands, which is continuous, and as already mentioned, qualitative variables such as race and gender, along with psychometric scales included in survey instruments. That wraps up our discussion of types of data and how we can organize data so that we can have quick reference for analysis.